It's it's fine. Welcome back everybody to another build video. I'm Andrew and I'm a maker here at Narwhal Labs in Bristol, Rhode Island. We've got the whole team together today to start the next build that we are doing, the Damascus Micarta Wayfarer uh, project. So what is Damascus Micarta, you ask? Let me lay it out for you. So we have Damascus. Damascus is two types of steel, forge welded, and hammered together to create a really unique pattern. It's made into knives and other types of tools. And then we have micarta. Micarta is made up of fabrics or papers and impregnated with resin. It, uh, it can be made into everyday objects like circuit boards or knife handles. So we took qualities from both of these materials and smashed them together to create our very own Damascus micarta. Plus, it sounds pretty damn cool. <laughs> Plus, it sounds pretty damn cool. So with that being said, we think 100% cotton is gonna be the best material for this. We're gonna be using all of these colors and we're gonna randomize them when we put them in the mold to create that Damascus look. So now for the mold, we made a simple melamine mold and 3D printed 11 by 11 inch dies that fit perfectly inside. For the die, we printed a positive and negative piece, so when we smush them together, the fabric will be displaced in the same pattern as the die. It's time to get the layup started. Jeff and Skip are gonna be helping to wet down the 250 pieces of cotton that are gonna be going into this mold. They're gonna be wetting them out. I'm gonna be putting them in here and making sure that they're fit nicely on top of this positive die. Once all of those layers are down, I'm gonna take this die, the negative, put it down here. This melamine block will go on the back. We might need to make a few spacers and then the top goes down and we bolt it all together. So I'm just brushing some mold release on the dies themselves and the inside of the melamine mold so that when the layup comes out, this stuff should separate. We've got our assembly line all set up. We have Jeff and Skip here helping me. Um, they're gonna wet out all of the colors of cotton and I'm gonna get it into the mold as fast as possible. We have 250 layers to go. And once this is all clamped down, we're gonna see something awesome on the other side. The assembly line is done. We have probably roughly around 200 layers of cotton in the mold now. Uh, there's mold release on the dies themselves and it's time to start to put it all together. This isn't gonna go in. Right. <laughs> this might take a minute. Stop laughing at me. A little later. It's not gonna fit. Yeah, I gotta sand it. Oh, I gotta sand it. I gotta sand it. All right, let's try that again. Oh, there we go. All right. This next. <laughs> I mean, that's a good thing. I want to, there was a lot of air in the layup. I would just be so so it's been two days since we did the giant micarta layup in this contraption here, and it's time for the big reveal. We need the one tool to end them all. The one tool that can do just about anything. It is right behind you, Graz. Throw it my way. Don't throw it, th throw it. No, don't, don't th throw it. Th don't throw it, throw, throw, it. It. throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it. Hey! The adjustable wrench. I've got these four bolts to take off and then we will start 
hacking this thing to bits and we'll get the layup out of there and see what it looks like. So the top plate, we've got some plywood spacers. And then I think from here on down, all of this is just gonna be stuck together. I guess we'll pop all of these out. There it is, boom. And now this thing is gonna be absolutely stuck together. Graz, man behind the scenes, camera guy. He is coming up with solution number one to Look at you! <laughs> Look at that! So these are all of the layers that Jeff and uh, Skip helped me put into the mold two days ago. It looks like we have a pretty solid piece in here. Just a little bit of air got stuck. I think this is actually the die, this black piece here. Yep. Then that's the die there in the micarta that is, you know, kind of formed into that 3D. Damascus sheet good is in between and we got to try to get that out. But good job, Gross. Thank you. We're all learning something. That worked for the first half. Now I think we're going to chiseling from here. We can get rid of these spacers, no problem. It's about getting everything to release in here so we can get these dies back out and the micarta out safely so we can go machining that. Plan of attack is to just work our way all the way around, start to release it from the edges and the sides, not just in one spot. Um, and hopefully we can start to, to take it apart piece by piece. Woo That's that mold release for you. Cool. Boom, how about that? So we're here at the planer, got the micarta piece set up and the planer is adjusted to its height. We've got the dust vac, um, just gonna be pulling all the chips away. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this if you're uncomfortable with putting a new material in your tools. We see this type of material in river tables all the time, so we're fairly confident that this will be safe. So um, we just are gonna take some short passes and hopefully get down to the good stuff. So we just put the piece of micarta through the planer. We've got both sides flat to reveal that amazing micarta pattern, that Damascus pattern, excuse me. And next we're going to the drum sander to smooth this out. Then we're gonna polish it up so we can really see the depth of color in the Damascus that we were going for. After that, it's on Jeff to see and see the glasses out. Let's get to it. So we've got the fest tool all set up with a bunch of different grits. We're just gonna start to work this surface a little bit and we're gonna get it polished so we can really see uh, what the Damascus looks like. It's a bit hazy right now, but we'll be able to really bring that color out after all of this is done. I know it doesn't look that good right now, but watch this. All right, so the next step is to finish up the cam for the glasses. Jeff has been working on that. Once that cam is done, we will get this registered on the Avid CNC and we will actually start cutting today. Well, I lied. It's actually the next day and it's finally time to dig into the Damascus micarta stock that we laid up. Leading up to this point over the past week, we've been taking time with tooling foam to perfect our model. Jeff and I have been working together to get the tolerances for the lenses and the hardware just right. Why don't we send it over to Jeff so he can bring you up to speed on exactly what he'll be doing. Hey guys. So Andrew sent his models from Rhino over to me where I imported them into Fusion to do our CAM work. CAM is known as computer-aided machining or computer-aided manufacturing, depending on who you talk to. And that's what allows us to take these 3D models and make toolpaths out of them to run on our CNC router. I've generated a couple adaptive clearing toolpaths that'll help us make our frames and temples 
So let's head over to the CNC router and get machining. All right, we're over at our Avid CNC Pro 2448 CNC router. We have our micarta held down to the bed with a few clamps. We have a quarter inch bit installed that we're gonna to use to drill two quarter inch holes where we're gonna insert steel dowel pins. Those will register our micarta down to the bed, allow us to flip it over and keep it in the exact same spot. And that'll allow us to machine both sides correctly. So we just got the parts off of the CNC and I can't thank Jeff enough for all the back end work he put into the cam on this. The uh, original prototype took around seven hours and he got it down to about three and a half. So he cut up half of the tooling time out and that's pretty amazing. Before we get to assembling the glasses, uh, we have some finish work to do. I'm gonna be using the Grizzly here, this one by 30 combination sander to rough sand the outline of the temples and the frames. And then it's on to hand working the rest of the way up in grit until we get it to a polish. Um, after that, it's time for hardware, it's time for lenses, but before we get ahead of ourselves, let's get set up and start sanding. So I just finished rough sanding all of the parts for the glasses on the Grizzly sander and now it's time for me to set up for hand sanding. I'm going to start at 220, go all the way up to 400 and then we're going to get polishing. Got some paste wax right here. Doesn't have the best smell to it but we're going to throw it down. We did a little test sample on another uh, piece and it does look like it's bringing all of that color out. So I think this is going to work. I hope the smell goes away. but it seems like this will do the trick to get that brilliant color out of the Damascus micarta. Oh yeah. Yeah, that looks so much better. Wow. Damn, Daniel. <laughs> So I'm going to finish uh, putting paste wax on all the parts now and then we'll get set up to put the hardware on. A little later. Boom. Check that out. It's time to get the hardware on the frames. We put that wax on, burnished it all up, and it looks great. Really, really stoked about how it came out. That color we were chasing for a little while, but it's there, we're happy with it. Uh, now we have these teeny tiny cute little pieces of hardware that we've got to install on the temples and the frames. And what I'm gonna do is take this Dremel and just start to grind out the space for those to get installed. So I got this one all set up. Let's get the other temple done. And then we will drill the holes and get the hardware. And it's just a bunch of these teeny tiny, I don't even know if you can see that. Teeny tiny little stainless screws and they just screw right into the micarta and it holds the, uh, the hardware right in place and we'll have a pair of glasses. There it is. Voila. All right, now it is time to get some holes drilled and then we're gonna screw the screws in, get that hardware actually locked in on those temples. Now that I got these done, it's time for the lenses. This is nice. <laughs> Starting to get the smells. Oh, it feels good though. So I just deconstructed the frames after we installed all of the hardware and it's time to get the lenses in finally. What we did realize though is we're not going to be able to glue these in in the shape that they're at. So we came up with a solution for getting the lenses to bend into the frames the way we need them to. And what we're, we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to get these a little warm, get them pliable and flexible. And then we're gonna let them cool down while we're holding the lenses in place. We just tested it out, went great. Fingers crossed we don't blow it right here, right now with my guy, Skip. Uh, let's see what happens. <laughs> Yeah, 
yeah, see it's super flexible. So get that up in there and now bend it and we're just gonna hold, see, look at that. That was perfect. Now we're just gonna hold it like this for maybe like 10 seconds. Um, and then it should actually harden into the shape that we're holding it in and it will take the, the lenses perfectly when we glue them in. It's a weird way of saying that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, you wanna slowly let go? Okay, I'm gonna let go. Look at that. Nice. Practically holding themselves in there. This is the new shape that we just heated up and bended to the lens. And this is the original shape that got cut by Jeff on the CNC. And I mean, this worked beautifully. Uh, just a little bit of heat, got it nice and plastic, uh, and let it cool down into the shape of the lens. And there we go. I guess that's a good tip to take away if you ever are in you know, a pickle like we were. A little bit of heat. But now it is time to glue the lenses in. We haven't done this before. We don't know how it's gonna go, but we're just gonna give it a shot. We did test some of the materials and how they bonded together with CA glue, and it seems like it works. So I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna get focused. I'm gonna try to get this glue laid down super evenly, and then we're just gonna hold those lenses in there until it's dry, and we'll see how it goes. All right, now I'm just gonna hold this for a couple minutes. And then we'll see if it bonded. I really have no idea. I'm nervous. <laughs> Let's see. You ready? For the reveal. All right, first test, a little tap. Nice. It's stuck. How about that? Woo! A little bit of schmutz on there, but that's a good lens in a good pair of Damascus Micarta frames. I'm going to take my time, refocus, and get the next lenses in. Then we're going to assemble the whole thing and celebrate. Uh, I got the feeling that it's pretty locked in there. It's feeling like the other lenses did at about this time. Uh, I'm not feeling any movement, so I'm just gonna hold it a little bit longer and we'll, we'll see what happens. I think it's good. Yeah? I think. Yeah, I think it's good. Yeah, all right, there it is. Let it dry a little longer, and then we'll, we'll tap on it and see how that adhered. What a win. What a freaking win. Stoked, I'm excited. Yes. Everything is finally glued up on the frames. The lenses seem to be fully intact and it's finally time for the final assembly of the Damascus Micarta Wayfarers. So I'm gonna get to it and hopefully on the other end, we've got a perfectly good pair of handmade custom sunglasses. Pretty sweet. Boom. Check it out. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. I had my shades on. Here they are, the Damascus Micarta Wayfarers that we built at Narwhal Labs with the whole team getting involved. They came out great. We're super happy about them. We learned so much. There were a lot of challenges along the way from the cam work that Jeff had. Jeff totally pulled through on. Um, and I mean, the material itself was such an interesting experiment from the beginning, from the paper to the canvas, to the cotton. We, we learned a lot and this uh, project was really about us getting out of our comfort zone 
and uh, trying new things as a team. And, and I really do think that the project came out absolutely amazing. Along the way, we did have a fellow friend, Tim Sway, who is a YouTuber and ambassador of Total Boat, pick up on what we were doing. He's an incredible guitar maker. And we're going to be sending Jeff with some dyes over to his channel, where they're going to be taking on the material uh, process that we've figured out here uh, to make a fingerboard for one of his guitars. Hopefully that video comes out in the near future, so look for that. And now, for the montage.